woke up on a medical bay, six people around me, spraying me with like water, fans and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've got this nurse standing over me, with a face mask on, looking right at me, and I was, I was just grab a frog. Mm -hmm. She turned around and she says, you were about a degree of being dead. And I was like, so I'm technically a dead man walking then? And she said, mm, more or less. Assemble the army! I am Fergus, King of the Wolfman. Let me introduce you to Dean McVee! Lightweight strongman. There's going to be over 250 competitors there. Six events over three days. Top tens get to the finals on the third day. Representing Scotland, Dean McVie. I haven't made the finals before, but I'm doing absolutely everything. I'm not physical being. I've been training for the last two years for this moment, right? Believe me, I'm ready to go to fucking war. Hope you fucking boys are ready because I'm bringing it. I'm Dee McVie, I'm 31, I'm from Edinburgh, Scotland, and I'm three times Scotland's strongest man under 80s. We have Dean McVie, Scotland's strongest man under 80 kilograms, no pressure, <laughs> eats pressure for breakfast. Initially getting into the sport, I started lifting weights at 15 years old, um, sort of just grew arms and legs, uh, just developed, just as, as you do through the years of training, hypertrophy training, done competitive bodybuilding, done competitive powerlifting, and then I just transitioned to then strongman, and just and here I am now. Initially I started when, in 2016, um, done my first novice comp, uh, Team Hawks. Uh, then started competing in the BNSF, done the Scottish, done the British, done the Worlds, went to Finland. Um, started doing competitions and official strongman. And it just developed and developed and I just kept getting better and better as a competitor. And obviously just got stronger over the period of time. And my best sporting achievement would be being three times Scotland's strongest man under 80s. First time it could be luck, second it might be a fluke, but I'm doing it for the third year in a row. It's evident that you're working hard and it's paid off. My main goal in the sport is to become Europe's strongest man under 80s and world's strongest man under 80s. Push it! Yes! Well done, Dean. I've became two times runner-up at Europe's Strongest Man under 80s, so that's a big focus, but it is predominantly world. Why I'd want to be World's Strongest Man under 80s is because it's just, you know, you're, you're technically the strongest man on the planet and you're respected weight crackie, we'll say. If I became World's Strongest Man under 80s, I think it'd be pretty empowering. I want to sort of give something to people as well, inspire people. My upbringing was a wee bit rough, getting raised as a child, like I never had a father when I was born. Um, my mother committed suicide when I was nine, um, so I was just like quite an unsettled child, we'll say. It was just unsettling as a young teenager growing up, a lot of negative energy. I was raised by my grandparents when I was nine. I do look at my gran as like a saint. Uh, she's sort of like my, my inspiration to me. Sort of just started projecting my, my negative energy into lifting weights when I was 15, 14, 15. Just joined like an old school bodybuilding gym, inch gym, which is now sadly destroyed. So I just want to be a role model for youngsters and just showing like it, regardless of your upbringing, like you can still pull through stuff and still achieve stuff. Um, and I'm sort of just a prime example of that. It's one of the most alpha male titles on the planet to be the world's strongest man and I've dreamed about it since, since I was a child. I don't want to be an average guy. I want to be, I want to be extraordinary. And to do that, you've got to do extraordinary things. You've got to push the body to the human limits. You've got to go beyond what you think is capable. You've got to push yourself through pain barriers. <laughs> you've got to push yourself through all sorts of mental barriers as well. You, you take yourself to places you wouldn't thought people could go to. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Britain's strongest man. 180 kilograms. 180 kilograms.
First place going to the next four events is Dean McVie. Plenty of points ahead. Yeah. We're eight points ahead going into that, so it might have cost a couple, but it's fine. Yeah, a bit of pressure, like, a wee bit nervous, if I'm being honest. Uh, aye, I'm alright at Stones. So in third place, with 52.5 points, is Dean McVie. Where's the trophy? Can I give it to him? Overall, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, consistent, a couple of wee mistakes, which may have cost me like a place in or so. But this is a sport. This is you live and learn. Um, Set a Scottish deadlift record, another one. I set the uh, Monster Dumbbell Scottish record. So, two records, third place in Britain. No bad day at the office. So, that was me getting third at Britain's strongest man under 80s. Um, obviously, the, the first half, I dominated it. I think I was about seven points clear. And uh, then eventually it was nine points clear after the dumbbell. So, it was sort of just massive le uh, le like lead. Uh, just made a couple of boo-boos, a couple of mistakes on silly events, uh, which obviously cost me dearly, we'll say. I probably like that one the most, because it looks cool. Uh, that was Scotland's strongest man under 90s. Um, that was cool. I tore my calf on the first event, uh, doing that on the farmer's walk. And uh, I sort of just cracked on and still won. But uh, that, that really hurt, really hurt. What made me dedicate my life to strongman was just, um, I'm. I'm obsessed, more or less obsessed a bit. My, my full focus has become world's strongest man under 80s. I think if the Stockmans can do it, why can I not do it in my respected category? Because um, I live and breathe this. I think it's inevitable, like not this year or next year, but I genuinely, truly do believe eventually it's going to happen. The Stockmans have just grown the sport single-handedly, just both of them. They're, they're genetically blessed, um, they've committed their whole lives to it. Um, they've been growing it for years anyway. What Tom's done is just remarkable. The fact that he's relatively young as well, still, that he's won um, Britain's strongest man just the now, and then he's just won world's strongest man, which no Scotsman's ever done. Obviously, credit to Luke Stockman as well, winning Europe's strongest man, which is technically the second biggest title in the world. But for both of them to do it, as brothers, is like, no one's ever going to do that in history. It's never going to happen again, in my opinion. And uh, it is, it's, it's good. They're doing amazing for the sport and the country.
that's my Green Beret, that's my dog tags, that was my pass suit, and that was my 4 5 commander plaque when I left. At that top left on, I was in, the, in a good place. These ones are good though. <laughs> I think uh, it's going to be cool competing alongside Mikhail Shavlikov, obviously, because he's um, ex Special Forces himself. Um, aye, and we're going to, I think there'll be a bit of mutual respect, both of us have a lids there as well. Um, I really respect him as a, as a competitor, I think the guy's an absolute animal, and a very interesting character. So it'll, it'll be fun, it's going to be really, it's going to be a good day. I joined the Royal Marines because I knew they the best. Simple as that. And I wanted to be the best. And I done it. So as a recruit, the, the training's 52 weeks. It's like the longest basic military training in the world. Um, and I was going into the was certain phases, phase one, phase two, then commando phase. So this is me just transitioning to phase two into the commando phase. Where I was doing a speed march. After you did that, you get your cat comfort, you're in the commando phase. I don't know why. Didn't feel that good for some reason. Sunny South, Devon, Scottish, not enjoying it. Got a few miles in, just started feeling pretty, pretty bad for some reason. The section commander was asking, like, what the hell's going on? I just started feeling really, really bad. Eventually, like, I felt like my, my, my torso, like, one side of my bleaks was starting to cave in. Pretty much just started zigzagging, running along the, the lane. I was getting to the end, um, collapsed. Woke up in a medical bay, six people around me. Spray me with like water, fans and all that kind of stuff. You, so you can get sunstroke on holiday and you get heat stroke, which can completely kill you. And then I've got this nurse standing over me with my face mask on looking right at me and I was, I was just about to grab her throat because I was just in such a, a like a, a horrible uh, physical state. When I calmed down, I'll say, and I cooled down, um, she turned around and she said, you know, about a degree of being dead. And I was like, so I'm technically a dead man walking then. And she said, more or less. So, yeah, don't you take too much for granted. <laughs>so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm um, going to be running through the finals events which will be bag throws and stones um, so we're going to simulate that now as close as possible approximately it's about 14, 14, 16, 18, 20 on the day I've got a 14, 16, 18 or 20 uh, also a respected height uh, I'll do as many until I'm, I'm happy it's one of them, you can't, can't really do too much of it you're still expending energy but we want to be, stay relatively fresh we'll say for stones as well even though I'm getting fatigued we'll get done Yeet. No. It's one of them, it's always going to catch me out maybe a wee bit. Obviously the height doesn't favour us at all, but it is what it is. Just sort of screwed up on the day, cost me a lot of points at Britain. Trip for it was actually alright, but now I'm, throw, I'm doing bag throws like three, four times a week now. I'm doing the work, it's just on the day you just need to perform and try no panic, because it just turns into a snowball effect. And I've been there a couple of times. The secret to bag toss is to be tall.
and not short, uh, but on a serious note, triple extension and confidence, having the confidence knowing it's going over rather than hesitating and checking. You know, it does happen, we do sometimes miss it and you do have to repeat it, but if you know that confidence that you're it has gone over, right. it's going to shape seconds off. Hesitated on the fourth over one. that period of the time. Oh, that's fine, I'd rather have no rush it, no go it. I'm going to go through my final stone run. Uh, we're about a week and a half out of official strongman games. I'm going to go for 100, all the way down to 150 kilo. So, what's going to happen is we're just going to go to the top height. Can't mind what height it is. It's high enough, shoulder height. Then we're going to go 100, 110, the highest one. We'll go 120, 130, 140, 150, and then my boys just got to keep them in check. My down regulation phase, I call it. I have to do certain things going into a competition, so I will do hot and cold, physio, all this kind of stuff. I meditate now and then as well, believe it or not. I do my hot and cold at home and also jump in the sea. I used to do it weekly, but the, the temperature in the sea wasn't cold enough. But we're into November now, we're in Scotland, so it should be all right now. But usually I'm just doing ice baths, 10 kilo, minimum ice. I'm not too sure about the actual temperature of the water, but I think anything November onwards and between November and February down at Portobello Beach is cold because everyone's got jackets on and drinking hot chocolate. This is what we came for, Royal Marines budgie smugglers. Oh yeah. Where I'm just going to be stripping off budgie smugglers on. If you say to yourself, this is going to be really cold, this is going to be really cold, I'll probably feel even colder. If you just get in, don't mess around, it'll happen quicker. Yeah, we're at Portobello Beach and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one phase of my recovery, or like one step in my recovery. Contrast therapy, so it's like an anti-inflammatory. I like the psychological effect of it and all, it's not pleasant but I feel refreshed after it. That's why I do it. I usually do it once a week. I'll be going in there for about five minutes, roughly. That'll be enough. Sort of the mindset training is like, I think it's just like narcissism and it's confidence in it. Like, I love the idea that I'm doing something extreme because it is to, to the average eye. It just builds you, isn't it? Like, I know it's like, it's more the physical training, but like the psychological effect on it, knowing I'm doing stuff that a lot of lads won't be doing, just people in general, um, gives me that little oh, edge and it's fun. <laughs> Alright, yeah, just refreshed. Feel better mentally as well, physically. That's a uh, OSG prep done. Um, done my last heavy session there. Done my last form of recovery as well. Now it's just a waiting game to get to Florida and fucking bring it. Representing Scotland, Dean McVee. In lane number three from England, you're not seeing double, it's Joe Daglish. I've been training for the last two years for this moment, right? Believe me, I'm ready to go to fucking war. Hope you fucking boys are ready, because I'm bringing it. Yeah! Come on! Oh, Tommy goes over! Look at the class! Kevin McGee's cruising pretty good. He's doing well, isn't he? And if anyone was ever going to do that, if anyone wasn't going to buckle under the pressure, it was Tommy.